The views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Hola everyone, welcome to Open, the one and only show bringing the best of the Bronx, New York and the world straight to you. I'm Rina Valentin, your host of Café con Leche every Friday. Here's what's coming up in today's show. Leading things off, we'll hear about the annual South Bronx Culture Trail Festival held by Casita Maria Center for the Arts and Education. And we'll talk about this year's prominent events along with the theme, Retroactivo. And after that, we'll learn the significance behind the 50th anniversary of Stonewall and get the details behind upcoming carnivalesque gay pride parties celebrating Pride Month. Then we'll sit down with four-time Emmy Award-winning host and executive producer Michaela Malazzi to discuss season three of Travel Bare Feet and we'll even get a demo showcasing cultural movements from Italy. Later on in the show, Bobby C. brings us up to date with the latest headlines in the world of sports and lastly, Grammy-nominated Saisa singer Miss Yaya joins the show for this week's Open Artist Spotlight to give us a taste of her new single featuring Tito Puente Jr. along with her participation at the 116th Street Festival. So sit back y preparate. All this and more is headed your way because now we are officially open. Welcome to Open, everyone. I'm Rina Valentin, your host of Café con Leche for the next hour. Always inviting you to get social with us online. That's right. Tweet us and follow us on Instagram at BronxNet TV or like us on Facebook at Open BronxNet Television. And of course, don't forget while you're there, follow moi on Twitter, FB, Instagram, Insta Stories, LinkedIn, and Snapchat at Rina Valentin. Casita Maria Center for the Arts and Education, the first and oldest Latino charity founded in 1934, known for many things, including its annual South Bronx Culture Trail Festival. And this year's theme is Retroactivo or Retroactivo. And that is all about presenting work that references the past in order to reinterpret traditions, artworks, and genres as a form of resistance and a way to create a future filled with resiliency, inclusion, and cultural pride. And joining us to tell us more, Casita Maria Center for the Arts and Education's Executive Director is Aide Morales. Welcome. Hola, saludo. Hola, <laughs> bienvenido. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rina. And thank you for being a cultural bridge between the amazing audience that you have and all the performers and musicians and dancers that you bring to this show. Thank you so much for being a bridge between that world of art and your um, viewing community. Thank you for for doing that important work. I appreciate you acknowledging that <laughs> really on air. You didn't have to, but I appreciate the acknowledgement very much so. It's, I, it's a love of mine. I love being that door to present and just show what we got because yeah. we've got a lot going on, including the South Bronx Cultural Festival, which is in full effect, just kicked off, right? We opened up with uh, Bobby Sanabria's uh, West Side Story Reimagined. Mm -hmm. No, actually it was the Indigenous Festival first, mm -hmm. right? And then we had Bobby Sanabria's West Side uh, story reimagined and now we have this amazing amazing lineup of women in resistance taking place this friday yeah it's an important month-long festival celebrating the bronx and its heritage and it's really about bringing a new narrative to the bronx right we know the old narrative about the bronx is burning and it's like really tired already so this is about how we can create a new story of the bronx about our power our beauty as a people and how the culture has carried us through so much and really to continue to resist 
and continue to celebrate. So we have an amazing MC who's going to um, <laughs> take us through the day that starts um, today, Friday, June 7th, starting at 2.30 and goes um, till about 7.30 p.m with a long list of amazing performers. Yes, I, I mean, some of the Grammy winners. <laughs> Flor <laughs> de Toloache. Mm -hmm. I mean, Flor de Toloache is gonna be performing tonight, you people, yes. Uh, and so, what I did wanna say is the beauty of this resiliency or this exercise in resiliency, it isn't being done in an angry manner. Mm -hmm. And that's what I really appreciate about this effort. This is about celebration, right? Um, so it's a month long festival. Um, there's an amazing calendar with like a poster. You can also go online to casitamaria.org. But there's so much, so I wanted to make sure that I, you know, rolled it out. But there's Remarkable, who's a violinist and a drummer, and she's going to be there doing what she calls spiritual engineering. So she's going to take us through the day. And then we have the Resistance Revival Chorus. This is a 60 female a cappella chorus. Like, they're going to move you. You got to come. Bring a chair and prepare to be touched, moved, and inspired. And they go up at three. And they, yeah. it's a, it's oh. so exciting. It is, it is because <laughs> they're singing protest music a cappella. Mm -hmm. Just visualize that, or just imagine listening to that. Sixty women. Wow. Ouch. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. And Batala, which is an Afro-Brazilian group, um, doing um, it's all female percussion. Um, doing Afro-Brazilian music, samba, and reggae. So there's something for everybody. Taina Asili, who's a Puerto Rican singer, songwriter, activist, will be bringing her magical music as well. And then we um, close with Flor de Toloache, uh, Grammy, a Latin Grammy award-winning group, all-female mariachi. So there's something for everybody. It's a celebration of our African roots. Puerto Rican community, Mexican community, really a reflection of everything that is the Bronx and a celebration while also bringing consciousness. Absolutely, and, and yours truly will be hosting this <laughs> fabulous festival today, uh, tonight uh, as well. And that's also happening, I just wanna make sure they, they're aware, it's at the Hunts Point Six mm -hmm. Train uh, Plaza. So um, that's today. However, the festival continues the entire mm -hmm. month. And I thought maybe you could walk us through, I mean, really quickly and really briefly, because I think it's best that you guys go to their website and mm -hmm. look at the calendar, because it's something to do that is not solely festival driven. Yeah, the festival includes walking tours, right? So it's uh, also about educating our community about the amazing history of culture in the Bronx. So there's walking tours included in the trail. On uh, Friday, June 21st, the last day of public schools, we're gonna have a schools out um, party with Judy Torres, freestyle Judy Torres. That's like my era, my generation. <laughs> that, well, it's, it's kind of my generation. So even though I'm a generation, I think, below you, I think. I yes, don't know. you are. I yes. think. I'm 55 and proud, yes. Yes, I am a generation <laughs> below you. Or maybe two. <laughs> I live in denial, so. I know. It's, you were born uh, a leap year. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Even better. <laughs> and Judy Torres, well, you know, you can never go wrong with Judy Torres. And the fact that it is a school year out block party mm -hmm. is really cool. And, of course, yours truly is going to be hosting that one as well. Yeah. So it's going to be a party. <laughs> Thank you so much, Rena. Because, I mean, you really take our community voice and, and bring that celebratory spirit that you, you know, bring to everything that you do. So we're really proud to have you. This festival is sponsored by council member um, Rafael Salamanca and his support of Casita Maria and the work that we do with uh, public art and cultural arts and also by Con Edison and Metro Optics. So we have a lot of supporters that are really partners with us that um, let us and help us make this possible, and I have to thank them. Well, we thank you, and we thank you for your service with Casita Maria. And before we go, let's just give everybody a little insight as to the impact that Casita Maria has in the community. So we serve a 1,000 young people every day through after-school programming and summer camp from grades K all the way through 12, and then we reach over 40,000 community members through our public arts programming. So we're the first and oldest Latino charity, as you shared, and uh, we were founded in 19. 
1934, so we're in our 85th year. 85th year, and you were founded in El Barrio, but now reside in the Bronx mm -hmm. and have since what, like 1961? We came to the Bronx following the Puerto Ricans from El Barrio as they moved to the Bronx. Casita Maria also um, located its headquarters in the Bronx, and um, we own a 90,000 square foot building. Um, where we have a gallery, a dance studio, where we do all our programming, and where there um, also exists a school called the Bronx Studio School for Writers and Artists. So there's a lot going on. Yeah, well, the beauty is is that we have a staple right here in the Bronx. <laughs> and, of course, we're celebrating that. And yes. thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having it. You're doing a fabulous job. <laughs> thank you, Rena. All right, you guys, once again, the South Bronx Culture Trail Festival will continue on to, until June 29th, but... Like I mentioned, feel free to check out their brochure for upcoming events by visiting casitamaria.org slash festival. And of course, don't forget June 21st, Judy Torres, closing out block party, hosted by yours truly, La Party. okay? So make sure you make that one. All right, we got to take a quick break, but when we return, we'll hear about an event celebrating gay pride. Don't go anywhere. We are together. And for the last 20 years, we have been building on a vision to share our views, our voices, on our channels. We are the Bronx. We are BronxNet. Hello, welcome back to Open, everyone. Uh, 50 years ago, the LGBTQ community took one of the biggest stands in the Stonewall riot that officially kicked off the gay rights movement. And on June 28, uh, 1969, the police raided the Stonewall Inn, a gay bar that became a haven for gay people. And this ultimately led to the historic riot that has changed the course of history for the LGBTQ community and has led many celebrations, including the event we will be talking about today, Carnivalesque Gay Pride Party. And joining us to tell us more about the Stonewall and the event, we welcome Imperial Court of New York, President Celestial Dragon Empress the second, the seventh, <laughs> excuse me, Coco Lachine, and Imperial Court of New York member Baroness Zelina Duval. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Thank you for having us today. It's well, an honor. Thank uh, you. Oh my goodness, it is my honor. <laughs> it's, a, it's an honor, you know, to be in the presence of queens, serving as a queen myself. <laughs> You're royalty, darling. You're royalty. I'm royalty. Oh, my gosh. I understand that you guys have a formality in which you cannot be present in uh, on public occasions without another person. So tell me a little bit about the Imperial Court and, and what that system is like. It's, I, it's a very interesting dynamic. Well, the Imperial Court of New York has been around for about 33 years. Of course, when we started, I was a mere child. And um, <laughs> it's been around for 33 years, and we, we are a social fundraising organization. And we raise money for a charitable group like AMFAR, the Hetrick Martin Institute, um, Trevor uh, Project, you know, a lot of the uh, social service organization. Okay, it's, it's funny that she said uh, when I was a child, only because uh, you have titles. All right, let's talk a little bit about how you, uh, I guess, are nominated for these titles, or is there a ceremony for these titles? Yes, actually, uh, every year we have this event called the Night of a Thousand Gowns. And uh, during the event, we crown a new emperor and empress. I was Empress Seven, and Zelina is one of our newer members. She's the, our baroness, and she's the pretty one. She's the talented Aww. one. So, uh, you know, so every year we do have this hierarchy and title, and, you know, you move up the ranks, you know, uh, and uh, that's what we do. I love it. I love it. And so as a baroness, what kind of responsibilities does that entail? It's just all with just giving back to the community and just showing like your presence, get, um, spreading the word, trying to keep a legacy alive with um, with being in the Imperial Court. It's amazing. Uh, it's, yeah. Uh -huh. we, yes. We, no. I'm, I, just because she was like, um, you know, I'm a very young mother empress, <laughs> and so I was just curious how that system. Oh, she's works. very young. She's very young. We're sisters. Uh, and also because we do Hilarious. so many events throughout the city, mm -hmm. and Zelina, uh, what she will be doing, she does performance, and uh, we raise money. We sometimes go to hospices and entertain people uh, living with HIV. So those are some things that we do. Now, let's talk about Stonewall and the 50th anniversary and what that means to your community. The funny thing is that she was probably not even born at Stonewall. No. You know, we're, 
were you born at some point? No. Uh, no, 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 none of us. Mm -mm. But uh, <laughs> it, it's part of that history. I can't take her. I love her. It's part of that history that is so important to us. You know, there's many stories about Stonewall. Of course, we remember Sylvia Rivera. We remember Marsha P. Johnson, and uh, they were there. They were the pioneers of this movement. Yes. Uh, and that event has sort of changed all of our lives, and it's sort of the catalyst of the uh, start of the gay rights movement. And also the parade and Absolutely. everything else that comes with it. So now uh, there's this new event uh, that's happening at El Barrio Art Space, yep. right? And it's in correlation with the uh, anniversary celebration. Yep. Um, so explain to me why Studio 54 or that feeling is part of this I guess celebration. Well, it's actually uh, a, a mix of uh, different worlds here. Uh, Carnivales is going to happen on June 15th. It's a Saturday, and it's produced by El Barrio Art Space. And what they're doing is it's actually a multi event. They start with a showing of uh, Pirates is Burning on Wednesday, and then that Saturday, there's a voguing contest that's going to happen at Carnivales. And at the same time, uh, the theme is sort of Studio 54. So we get the uh, combination of two cultures. One is the, the, the house balls of uh, Harlem, and then we have the red carpet group from Studio 54. So it's that mixture blending of uh, different cultures in celebration of who we are. And you are co-hosting it? Yes. And you're going to be performing? Yes, I am. And uh, may I ask what you'll be performing in, in, within the celebration? Well, I want to take it back and pay homage to, um, I just want to do some Diana Ross, maybe, nice. maybe a few more in between. We'll find out and see. And so, <laughs> I love it, I love it. <laughs> so when you became part of the Imperial Court mm -hmm. of New York, what does that signify within your community? You know, for, for a lot of us, we, we come from different backgrounds. and uh, When you say different backgrounds, are we re referencing cultural backgrounds? Cultural backgrounds mm -hmm. and how we each grew up because, you know, uh, being an Asian living here in the United States, it was a little difficult. And I'm sure Selena has her story well, as well. Well, Selena's originally from the BX. Yes, I am. Welcome originally. home. We forgot to mention Thank that. Thank you. That's right. Um, coming from the South Bronx has been very difficult, so it's like very hard with the struggle. And just coming back, Coming up here the, this morning, it was like, wow, it's changed a lot. I remember go, going to see like where these new buildings are. I, I would play in these ditches because there was no playgrounds or anything at all. And with me being in the Imperial Court, I just want to give back to the community to, to be that voice and keep that legacy still going for the next few future generations to come. That's lovely. Yeah, so what we do is we, we provide a safe space mm -hmm. uh, for people to join us. And what we do is we raise money through you know, performances, mm -hmm. looking fabulous, you know. Lots of jewelry, of jewelry, hair, you know? <laughs> accessories. Absolutely. You got to come to one of our events one day and we'll glam you up. Uh, absolutely. I would love to be glammed up by you. Of course. I, I want to look like you. Oh, you can. It, it, it takes a lot to look mm -hmm. this cheap, you know. It looks, yes. Oh, my gosh, I can't with them. I can't. Mm. Oh, my gosh, I'm <laughs> definitely hanging out with you, I'll tell you that. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you're my kind of queen. I love your glitter going on for today. It's fabulous. Oh, yeah, you see me? You see me? Oh, you can be very shining bright like a diamond. diamond. <laughs> shining bright like a diamond. <laughs> love it. <laughs> Gorgeous, beautiful. All right, so in closing, well, what do we want to leave everyone with? You know, this is... This is uh, uh, we were celebrating 50 years of Stonewall. However, this is not the time that we celebrate. We should be celebrating every day mm -hmm. our diversity, uh, where we come from, because if we don't know our history, we'll never be able to move forward. So this is an important time, especially for the youth of today. Yes. They need to understand the history, and uh, we're here to help you uh, get there. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. And then there's the inclusivity of just absolutely. being who you are. Just be who you are, love yourself, and there's always somebody there for you, always. So if anything, you can always come to the Imperial Court. If you feel you need a safe place to come by, we're, we're open to everybody to come in. And we open them and embrace them with open arms. All right, well, thank you. Your Highnesses, thank you for your being majesty, here Your Majesty, you mean. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon, Your Pardon. Majesty. Pardon. <laughs> well, we should, we, we, we should dub you today as our honorary, uh, what title would you like? We'll yes. just, we'll honor her as the new, Honorary um, uh, Princess. 
We princess. Have one empress, yeah, was it? You know, no. there can only be em one empress per room. All right. You're our honorary princess of the day. Yes. I'll take it. You yes. couldn't. You couldn't flatter me any better. Princess I, Rena. I, princess Rena. Yes. I have officially been crowned the honorary princess of the Imperial Court <laughs> of New York, and I love it because they heard me when I said, age-wise, I live in denial. All right, you guys, once again, Carnivalesque Gay Pride Party is taking place Saturday, June 15th from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m., and that's happening at El Barrio's Art Space, located at 215 East 99th Street. And for tickets, you can visit Eventbrite at Carnivalesque at Gay Pride Party, celebrating 50 years, Stonewall tickets. That's long, but I'm sure you'll find it if you Google it. All right, we got to take a quick break, but coming up, we'll sit down with the host and producer of Bare Feet, uh, Michaela Malazzi. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Open, everyone. You know, we're always inviting you to get social with us. That's right. Tweet me at, uh, well, tweet at BronxNet first, at BronxNet TV, and while you're there, tweet me too at Rita Valentin. Our next guest is a four-time Emmy Award-winning host and producer of the hit show, Bare Feet with Michaela Malazzi, a show that gives viewers a look inside Malazzi's journey as she discovers people and culture through dance and music. And season three, Bare Feet uh, with Michaela visits destinations based on her own DNA map and joining us to tell us more and give us a quick dance demo. Please welcome Michaela Malazzi. Princess yeah. Vina Valentin right here. Oh, you You've been that. crowned. Yeah, of course. Uh, that's it. It's on record. It is. <laughs> it's official. It's official. It's official. I mean, I don't know if I have to go through a ceremony afterwards, <laughs> but you know, I'm down. Why not? Yeah. Why not? I love it. Well, thank you for having me again. I love being here and I love you have incredible guests every time. It's just inspiring to see the beautiful people that are here, that love you and that you support as well. Oh, Yeah. Yeah, I know. That's why we're sisters, because you do the same thing. Oh, girl. Oh, man. I love watching you float <laughs> around and just meet people through dance, you know, because dancing is you know, my, my favorite pastime yeah, as well. I know. So uh, the beauty of what you've created this time around and also I know I mentioned that she's a four-time Emmy winner but I love mentioning that because that's such an accomplishment Thank you. having come from this building from nothing yourself yeah yeah you're the executive producer you're the creator I mean obviously she has a team but it takes something to put up a show like that and now to travel throughout Europe mm -hmm. uh, hello yeah oh well, my gosh well we go to Europe the Caucasus North Africa the Middle East uh, Northwestern Europe so my my DNA is a nice Mediterranean swath that kind of trickles out and it's really really beautiful I get very emotional in this new season um, but it's always that, like you said, connecting with people through dance and music. And I felt even more connected knowing that somewhere in my past, someone may have come from the land that I was dancing on. So it was really beautiful. So I know you're not going to give it away, right? Right. right. You <laughs> have to like, watch. Like, don't even, you gotta, don't even no, watch. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. you got to watch, though. Right, you have to watch, yeah. right? It's a 13 episodes. We have actually 11 episodes 11 this season. 11 episodes. Yeah. 11 episodes this mm -hmm. season. That's a lot, it's considering. A right? So that was a lot of DNA traveling. Right. <laughs> Well, we have we, we could have done more. We actually really? could have done more, but um, we're public television, so we have to find all our own funding. It is it is a one man band, followed by a lot of people supporting. But it really is uh, bootstrapping this thing. Well, you, yeah. you've done an amazing job. I Thank mean, you. I was there for your release party, yeah. and the support you have is phenomenal, and the people love you. It was I a love, love you. It was a love fest. Let's say it was, admit, a, it was love a really fest. beautiful like fair. People are ready for this new season. I think they're excited. And this, it's just beautiful. We've upped the production value, um, and it's gorgeous. I'm so proud of this new season. I couldn't be more proud of it. And the stories we're telling, the people we're meeting, and it's it's just so personal to me, especially this specific season. Well, of course, you're, you're, you're learning about your ancestors, yeah. right? And you're actually in touch with them on a physical level yeah. in some form, right? Yeah, yeah. And, so, and you're visiting where they originate from. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I get it. I'm already there, and I haven't even seen it. <laughs> 
So um, before we, we move forward uh, in the demo, I just wanted to ask, uh, with this DNA travel, like that's like this new trend happening, right? Yeah, we were a little bit ahead of, <clears throat> excuse me, a little bit ahead of the curve because I started this project almost two and a half years ago. And now DNA travel has become a hot travel trend. A ton of companies are offering sort of combinations of getting your DNA tested and then going on trips based on your DNA. So I'm a little proud of myself that we were a little ahead of the curve. Now we're on trend, even though it took this long to make. And so you're going to see if you're interested in getting your DNA tested or you have gotten your DNA tested and you don't know what to do with that information, book a trip. It's life changing. I've had so much fun dancing with people. I've had such an experience of, and you'll see this in the season, is I'm in Morocco and I see someone who looks like my father. And I'm in Uzbekistan. I look like I see someone who looks like my mom and her side of the family. These are places that are fairly exotic to me and my family's Italian culture. And can I add that? Was that a hint? Oh. <laughs> but Did anybody else here? Right, right. <laughs> but can I add that you know this month not only is it beautiful Pride Month, but it is uh, Immigrant Heritage Month. And I come come from a family of immigrants. And so we're celebrating that immigrant story. And on top of that, we are also doing live events every Wednesday in downtown Brooklyn, dancing around the world with me on bare feet. So we're really trying to bring this to the community, bringing out that your DNA, can you can dig deeper through dance and music. So I agree. I'm very proud of this. Yay! Yay! We're proud of you. Thank you. And so um, with that said, uh, I know you don't want to give it away, but before we do do this demo, right? Because we're going to do a demo. Yeah, of course. And I, we can set it up. But yeah. I just want to mention that while today is June 7th, the actual release happened yesterday. Yesterday, yeah. Right? You aired yesterday, the first episode, yeah. June 6th, NYC Live uh -huh. at 930. Right? Every, Every Thursday, Thursday at 930. And they have re-airings Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. NYC Life is our presenting station. We love them so much. They have given us so much love and support from day one. Um, literally started airing my show back five years ago and have been supporters ever since, so I cannot thank them enough. But you can watch it, um, and next week, I won't give it away where we're going, but it's gonna be in the region of the Caucasus. But we are gonna be doing a dance today that we featured from last night's episode. Oh, nice. So if anybody missed it and they wanna watch it this coming weekend, we're gonna do a little bit. I, my family's Italian, so our first episode, we start in Italy, in the heel of the boot called Puglia, um, and we're going to do La Pizziga, a little bit of La, la Pizziga. Pizziga? Pizziga. Pizziga. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Or shall we get up yeah. to do that? Yeah. So La Pizziga means mm -hmm. the bite or the pinch. And it's literally the, it means the pinch of the spider. And as if women were uh, overcome by the venom of the spider, which really was depression. And as you know, being Puerto Rican, and you understand that like bomba, you use dance to let that emotion come out. Same thing in Italian dance and Pizziga. They use the rhythm of the drum and the dance to, to get out that, that, evil spirit that you feel inside or the depression that's what we're going to do it's of joy and bringing out the positivity in 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 the community so it's fast because you want to sweat it's like the italian workout okay all right Am I ready for this i think so okay. it's easy so i'm right. just gonna so go wait, they're gonna put the music on do oh should i show you the step oh yeah, yeah show me Real the quick. step first. she's gonna show me the step first okay so we go one two three one two three and that's it for now there's other steps but we have a little quick Demo, we can put the music on. It's going to be uh, fast, now we can my put dear. The music on? Princess okay. Rita, it's going to be fast. Princess Rita, I love that she's calling me Princess Rita. <laughs> Should we have the music on? Officially I know. And we're ready for the music. It's fast, <laughs> it's quick. This is our tempo. One, two. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. And then we go in a circle. Yeah, I understand what you were talking about as far as needing a sports bra. <laughs> <laughs> and then make a face each other. One, two, one, two, and back. Okay, forward. Yeah, yeah you got it. You, or? you can do the same or opposite. Oh, this is so beautiful. One, two, three, hop. One, two, three. You can do it slower to catch your breath, right? Ah, yes, Dean, I love it. <laughs> See, you're Italian in here, oh, though. We're all Latin, baby. Right? <laughs> and when they dance, sometimes they have a scarf in their hands and they dance with each other. Sort of like a courtship dance, too. And this music is from the band that we feature, Canzoniere Grecanico Salentino, in that Julia episode. You hear? Right. Our breath already, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. It's a good workout. It is. And so this is folklore, right? Yes. 
Um, this group that you were mentioning, they're like world renowned. Oh, they are Soundlines winner best band of in the world for 2018 last year. So they're a world renowned band in world music, which is pretty phenomenal if you think about it. And there's been this resurgence of this Pizzigat dance. Their parents started this band 48 years ago. The next generation took over. You know, you see me following me. I know, I know. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so well, cool. We just like gotta keep talking. Keep... I can't do this without this. You know, I hear the music. I just can't keep my feet from moving. So, this band, there's been a huge resurgence in Pizzigat, which is a dance hundreds and hundreds of years old. And it's been world renowned. People all over the world are kind of catching on. And it's beautiful. Uh, uh, this this is, is the fast. Moment. Here we go. Ready? Right, yep. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yari na si! Ay, ay, ay! Ay, ay, ay! Better go. No. That was you can. <laughs> you can. And so, up. There we go. Ha. One, two, three. Ha. Brava. Very good. So, and then, we're going to face each other. There we go. Very nice. I love this. Beautiful. I'm curious. Beautiful. What was that for you? Doing this dance. Yeah. There's something about it, like yeah. the reading and your movement, yeah. that shows that it was an emotional experience for you. The whole thing was emotional. Do you know this dance? Oh, I love, love that music. To us. Oh, brava. Brava. Brava to Italia. Brava. Viva Italia. <laughs> we did, you know, the, every moment that I danced with people, especially Pizziga, knowing, especially from Italy, but mm -hmm. every single dance that I did was this immediate connection. And that happens to me everywhere I go. I can't explain it, but when I dance with people, something opens up in me. And something, something opens up in them. And there is this communication that happens without speaking. Because in a lot of these countries, I don't speak the language. Right. So you're communicating through movement. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's why it's the universal language. Yes. And thank you for bringing it thank here. You. As thank you. As I catch my breath. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and are there any last words you want to share with our viewers? Yeah. Michaela, thank you so much for coming thank here. Thank you. Thank you for dancing with oh, me. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing it with me. Oh, thank you. Thank yes. you. Grazie. Can, gracias. Yeah. Oh. Marlaba, Mutsmes. These are the thank yous in all the languages and the places. Shukra. Merci, gracias, all the places we went to. Um, so you can watch Bare Feet every Thursday, 9.30 p.m. on NYC Life, and join these adventures with me. And if you want to come to downtown Brooklyn, Rina, you should come. Okay. We're going to be doing Bomba and Plena next week, every nice. Wednesday at 9, uh, excuse me, every Wednesday from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. in downtown Brooklyn. If you go to our website, travelbarefeet.com, all the information is there. We are doing dance lessons. Uh, live music, dancing, and this band, Cancionieri Grecanico Salentino, will be there next Wednesday. In two weeks. In two weeks. So you're going to pizza coming all the way from Italy. From Italy. Lovely. Woo. I know one thank you, and that's Avharisto. Avharisto, oh, great. Oh, great. Yes. That's right, you go right, there. We too, go right, we go to Cyprus, yeah. we do. Yeah, I knew Good that. Right. Good you night. guys, once again, Bare Feet with Michaela Malazzi is airing every Thursday at 9.30 p.m. on NYC Life. And for more information on the upcoming events we just discussed, be sure to visit www.travelbarefeet.com. Stay tuned. Bobby C's Weekly Sports Roundup is coming up next. This is Bobby C. out at the MLB studios in Secaucus, New Jersey, where we begin our look at sports this week with the future of the majors. How exciting is it to have the first pick, the Baltimore Orioles? Well, it's definitely a great um, opportunity for the organization, you know. Uh, it's an exciting time. It's an exciting time to get the first pick, an exciting time to kind of start that rebuild and maybe tonight. As a 10-time All-Star in the Majors and a guy that's in the Hall of Fame, how difficult is it for these guys to pick guys that are going to be 10-time All-Stars and future Hall of Famers? 
Well, I was a 20th round pick, so uh, you never know, I think. But uh, you just go with the talent. And you know what? It's, it's real, uh, I think it's real visible, and all the information is, is very clear in today's scouting, and, and there's really no secrets out there just because of the high visibility that these players are. You just don't realize, man, the percentage of guys that start out playing from Little League, you know, the high school, that, that percentage of guys that make it to the major leagues, let alone Hall of Fame career. I get a chance to see the young kids get started, you know, and really what really, really means the most to me is see them, like, you know, excel in their game. See them, things that you try to teach them, and they take it out on the field and it actually work for them. So they, they read into it. We have four guys here tonight, and you know, hopefully these guys are going to all get picked tonight so we can all celebrate. It's the beginning of something amazing, and for myself, just to be able to be here and witness all this, you get a little goosebumps thinking about it. I'm so happy to be here, and this has been a dream come true. I, I love New York, the city, the city, the atmosphere around it. It's just like, it's just an awesome city, and I, I can't wait to get here. That's incredible. Um, you know, it's, it's everything you kind of dream of, and uh, you know, try to put it in the back of my mind uh, as much as I could. But you know, when when you get there, it's, it all gets real, and you know, hearing my name was got goosebumps. I was calm. I mean, um, at the end, um, I know that God has a plan for me, and. I ended up in the in the in the team that he wanted me to be to end it up. So it feels good. I mean, it definitely was a relief to finally hear my name called. Um, you know, it's it's definitely a blessing to be here, and I'm I'm so ready to get started. Brett the Met. With the 12th overall pick in the 2019 MLB Draft, the amazing snap, the 19-year-old third baseman, he earned that distinctive nickname from his days with the Mets as a t-ball player. In a video tweeted out by the Mets' Twitter account, Beatty expressed his excitement for being drafted and his glorious nickname. He was the number 17th ranked prospect on MLB Pipeline's top 100 list before he was taken by the club with the 12th pick. Beatty just graduated from Lake Travis High School around the area of Austin, Texas. Although he is committed to play for Texas Tech, it does feel like Brett the Met is destined to wear orange and blue. The third base prospect hit a ridiculous 658 with 16 homers and 44 RBI in his senior season. Beatty is highly touted as one of the best power hitters in the draft, if not the best. Great story for the Mets and an equally great one for the Bronx Bombers and their top pick. The Yankees already have two of the best born and bred New York major leaguers in Dellen Patances and Adam Adovino. Now they have one of the best young prospects from the area too. They went local to start the MLB draft on Monday night taking Del Barton High School which is in Morristown, New Jersey by the way. Shortstop Anthony Volpe with the 30th pick and his coach as he said afterward Volpe got drafted by the team he's always dreamed of playing for. He is expected to sign with the Yankees. Volpe is a teammate of ace pitcher and fellow Vanderbilt signee Jack Leiter the son of former Yankees and Mets pitcher Al Leiter. On a side note, the younger Leiter was drafted by the Yankees in the 20th round, but as Baseball America reported, the Yankees would have to forfeit draft picks and get Leiter to agree to a signing bonus several million dollars below his projected first round offer to keep him away from Vanderbilt. Leiter is expected, of course, to go to college. Back to their new prize shortstop. The Yankees famously drafted high school shortstop Derek Jeter in 1992, but haven't had as much luck lately with shortstops in the first round, taking Cito Culver in 2010 and Kyle Holder in 2015. Here's to hoping things are different with these two feel-good stories for the Mets and the Yankees. A feel-good day at the ballpark Thursday in Queens. The Mets entered the bottom of the eighth inning of Thursday's game with a 3-3 tie with the San Francisco Giants, but their bats came to live at life, excuse me, in the late innings, which is becoming a trend for them this season. After a Jeff McNeil single in the seventh tied the game, the offense spiked for four runs in the eighth. Todd Frazier got just enough of a two run home run, followed by RBI hits from Juan Lagaris and McNeil, putting the Mets in front for good in their 7 3 victory. We go inside the locker room for more. You know, just trying, trying to knock them in. wasn't trying to hit a home run. You know, was trying to get a, just a, basically a hit or find a way to get them in. And uh, you know, it wasn't even the right. It wasn't even a good pitch to hit. So for me, to find a barrel and get it on there, uh, I couldn't be happier. I mean, you know, every fly ball, I was staying out there on the mound because I didn't know if it was going to go out today or not. So uh, I mean, there's been a couple of questionable, you know, home runs, but obviously, uh, you know, can't really say anything about it. So we just got to go out there and pitch and try, try to get out. You know, I just try to get a good pitch to hit and um, I mean, try not to do too much up there. And, um, yeah, it's difficult, you know, not staying pitching in a few days and then coming back and facing Lovingard on the first day. You know, that's always a little difficult, but 
Um, I guess it only gets easier from there. Including the five runs Thursday, the Mets have now scored 116 runs in the seventh inning or later this season, the most in the National League. It was the team's 15th come-from-behind victory this season and their 10th win and their final at-bat. The Amazons welcomed the Colorado Rockies to Flushing for a three-game weekend set beginning tonight at City Field. The Pinstripers ended their mini-losing streak Thursday in Toronto. That's right, Jays fans, you can put away the brooms. The Yankees buckled down and staved off a Blue Jays sweep with a satisfying 6-2 win. The Blue Jays tried it out veteran Edwin Jackson to the mound and the Yankees made him look like a 35 year old journeyman who has pitched for a record 14 MLB teams although he set them down in the first inning it took 30 pitches to do so the Yankees got another chance to score in the second inning and they didn't mess around this time DJ LeMayu smacked a two out double off the wall and make it one nothing and then Aaron Hicks crushed a three run bomb on the very next pitch after the Yankees had been relatively quiet offensively this week. The early hitting was a nice change of pace. The Bombers went on to win 6 2. The Pinstripers are in Cleveland this weekend to begin a road series. First place Yanks are now 39 and 22. The Indians come in at 500 at 31 and 31. Time for some quick hitters from around the world of sports. Maybe June will be the month of the upset. The St. Louis Blues, a team I said I was rooting for this postseason, moved one win away from their first Stanley Cup triumph after a controversial 2-1 win over the Boston Bruins on Thursday gave them a 3-2 lead in the NHL's best of seven championship. If you recall, I had mentioned right here on the show how the Blues entered the Cup Finals with an 0-12 mark all-time in finals games. They lost the opener but have been sensational ever since. The Toronto Raptors did not lose the opener in the NBA Finals, but they dropped Game 2. Nonetheless, Game 3 belonged to the Raptors in enemy territory. Perhaps I'll be wrong there. It looks like the Warriors may not be able to win without Kevin Durant after all. Durant will not play in Game 4 of the NBA Finals. Golden State coach Steve Kerr announced on Thursday Durant has not played since he injured his right calf on May 8th in the Western Conference Semifinals. He has missed the past eight games. Kerr had better news on Clay Thompson's strained left hamstring. Thompson didn't play in Game 3 on Wednesday as the Warriors lost 123-109 to the Raptors. Thompson is expected to return tonight. Toronto leads the best of seven series 2-1. Game 4, as I said, is tonight in Oakland, California. Bad loss for the Warriors all the way around. Warriors minority owner Mark Stevens, who shoved Kyle Lowry of the Raptors during Wednesday night's game, has been fined $500,000 and banned from games for one year, the Warriors and the NBA said on Thursday. Golden State will have to fight back if they plan on winning another championship. On the baseball diamond, the Pinstripers lost out on free agent pitcher Dallas Keuchel. He signed with the Atlanta Braves Thursday. The deal is for one year and 13 million. Keuchel, 31, posted a 3.74 ERA with 153 strikeouts. He spent seven months as a free agent just ahead of reliever Craig Kimbrell, who signed with the Chicago Cubs on Wednesday. Rafael Nadal's first match with Roger Federer at the French Open in eight years finished just like all the others. A Nadal victory to extend his dominance on the red clay. Nadal eyeing a 12th French Open title swept Federer 6-3, 6-4, 6-2 to reach Sunday's final. In motor racing, NASCAR is in Michigan this weekend while IndyCar is in Texas and F1 is in Canada for the Grand Prix. Maybe we should have given Tom Brady the benefit of the doubt. The GOAT expressed regret for applying to trademark the term Tom Terrific, explaining Thursday that his intention was to ensure people didn't refer to him by the nickname. Brady's request has drawn the ire of New York Mets fans as Hall of Fame pitcher Tom Seaver had long been referred to as Tom Terrific. Look out, Knicks. The Brooklyn Nets are making moves. The Nets are trending, and they are trading guard Alan Crabb and his $18.5 million contract to the Atlanta Hawks, clearing the salary cap space to pursue two max free agent contracts this summer league sources told ESPN the Nets are sending Crab the number 17 pick and the 2019 NBA draft excuse me in the draft and a 2020 lottery protected first round pick to the Hawks the deal can't be finalized until July 6th here's the big news Boston guard Kyrie Irving who is expected to become a free agent and Brooklyn have a strong mutual interest the Nets have 46 million now in salary cap space to sign two big names 
Brooklyn's dream scenario is to lure Irving and Golden State's Kevin Durant to the franchise. That was the Nick plan, according to reports. League sources say that Irving's interest in the Nets has increased and Brooklyn has emerged as a serious contender to attract Irving. The Nets could keep restricted free agent guard D'Angelo Russell on a max or near max deal to play with the free agent star too. Also, some rumblings say that he could be dealt. Either way, the Nets appear to be trending in the right direction. Knicks fans are hoping they are too. The Orange and Blue appear to be considering Texas Tech's Jarrett Culver for the number three pick in the upcoming NBA draft. The belief is that the Knicks, if they keep the third pick, won't pass on Duke's R.J. Barrett. But there are several factors that could disrupt such a course, and Culver's stock is rising. He's an elite defender and considered a very good two-way player. Those are the headlines. We hit the C-list for a Belmont Stakes preview. The final leg of the American Triple Crown is Saturday, and the top two favorite horses for the 2019 Belmont Stakes are set to start the race side by side on Belmont Park's 1.5 mile track. Betting favorite Tacitus drew the outside post for this weekend's Test of Champions, while Preakness Stakes winner War of Will will start from post number nine, just inside his fellow contender. I like War of Will to win it. The horse landed the rail for both the Preakness and the Kentucky Derby. He's going to be allowed to position himself a little better from the outside, just in my opinion. Winning the Preakness wasn't enough to make War of Will the Belmont Stakes favorite. In fact, being the only colt to run in all three Triple Crown races really didn't earn him the respect one would expect. Well-rested Tacitus was made the slight favorite over the hard-working War of Will in a Belmont Stakes that wraps up a wacky Triple Crown. A year after Justify Electrified the racing world by capturing the Triple Crown. A disqualification in the Kentucky Derby really has taken the air out of the Preakness and the Belmont. War of Will was impressive in winning the Preakness, but the race was overshadowed when a rival colt threw its rider at the start and ran around the track during the race. Curious to see what chaos might ensue tomorrow. Post time is 6.48 p.m. You can watch on NBC. Upset season. That's your sports. I'm Bobby C. They call me Maxi, but I prefer Tripod. I was your above average four-legged homie and then wham, bam, minivan. Some people pity me. Now that's lame. I still run, fetch, and swim. And the ladies love me. I'm the ultimate wingman. Just don't ask me to high five. Welcome back to Open. Our next guest is a Grammy-nominated salsa singer who continues to make a name for herself in the music industry. She has an incredible story, and now she's here to tell us about her upcoming solo EP, El Reencuentro. And joining us to tell us more, we welcome Grammy nominee, Miss Yaya. Hi, yes. Rina. Princess Rina. Oh. Well, no, todo el mundo tiene que That's it. We have to tell you. That's it, right? Because you were here on the episode in which I was officially crowned. I mean, it's only fitting that we all know that you are royalty, my darling. Oh, wow. Well, thank mm -hmm. you. I'll accept. I embrace. Hey, moving <laughs> on. This Grammy nominee. Thank making, you. Thank making you. some new magic happen. Mm -hmm. I understand with Tito Puente Jr. Yes. on top of that. Yes. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Tito and I have been friends. Well, we've been friends like this day and age now that everyone's friends on social media we've been friends through social media for over 12 years and i recorded this song five years ago i wrote this wrote and recorded this song five years ago and i always wanted him to feature on it and i was holding off on putting it out and finally i was like 2019 i think this is the year we should put it out it's fitting because people say salsa que se murió pero la salsa vive so I was like, let me ask my friend, because we've been performing together for over two years, and he said yes, and here we are. I love it. And, Thank you know, you. I just want to put out there how much I admire you, right? Because, um, yes, no, it, because I know it's a, tif a difficult industry for you, for women in general, mm -hmm. um, to hold their position in a lead position. And while you were the lead singer for DLG, you were still operating under 
DLG, mm -hmm. um, that Grammy nominee came from there, but mm -hmm. yet you've been able to forge forward and pursue your career as a lead singer in your own right, and now you're performing your own written work, mm -hmm. which is lovely. Well, in 2016, I released my first solo album while still being a part of DLG, uh, songs that I've written and songs that people have submitted to me for my own project, and I kept, again, putting it off, putting it out, um, because of budgets, because I was, I'm an independent artist, so I'm funding everything. My day job was paying for everything, and my gigs were paying for everything. So um, it's not as easy to put out as much work as you're recording and writing. It's not as easy to keep putting it out. So you just got to keep at it and, and just ignore all the naysayers, especially with salsa, because it's, it's, a tr it's part of our culture, and people who are salsa lovers are so... They, they feel very strongly about salsa and like, no, salsa es esto, esto y esto. And that's the only thing it can be. But um, growing up in the 80s and 90s listening to salsa, traditional salsa, and then listening to hip hop and R&B, I was a huge fan of DLG as a kid. So when I became the lead singer of DLG, I was like, this is the music I want to make. It right. reflects my upbringing. So, um, yeah, which Sticking is beautiful. To it. That was a wonderful opportunity yes. for you. And really I'm really what I was alluding that. to is the fact that you've been able to continue moving forward oh, even yes, after DLG. Yes. And so now I understand you have a few events coming up. Yes, I do. I'm actually performing tomorrow at the Puerto Rican Festival on um, the Monster Stage on 119th and 3rd Avenue. And then next week I'm launching this single that I have with Tito, um, Y Dicen Que. It, the official release is June 14th and we're doing a performance, me and my band are performing at um, the Engine Room in Times Square. So I'm really excited about that, to perform it live and then to have everyone finally listen to it. But I'm you gonna, have a full band, right? Yes, full yeah, band, 10 piece band. 10 piece yes. band, que se llama La Fuerza. La Fuerza. La Fuerza, may, that's right, pues claro. May that's, La Fuerza be with you. What else are you gonna you? have back of you on? I mean, you know, and mo uh, most of them, we went to high school together, so Lovely. we've we've been vibing for a really long time. That's awesome. That's that's Thank also you. important to keep it in the family mm -hmm. and to grow together. Yes. And to always make sure you look out for those who have been looking out for you. Yes. In the process. Same. Like you, looking out for me. Aww. I'm here with you. And, and like, I admire you. I admire what you do for the community. I admire you as a Latina woman. Um, and that you keep going too. And you're showing me that it can be done. So why can't I do it? Why can't we all do it? That's right. And we do it together. We do it together. And, I and thank we you. shine bright together. Yes, like right? Because, mira, esta tiene glitter también. Ay, porque me lo pusiste encima. Pero es okay. It's okay. I'll take it. I'll take it. It must have been the hug, right? It's the hug. Yeah. You know, the, the naming of being called princess or finally, I mean, queen. But today we'll do princess. It's right. Fine. Yes, you know, because, you know, we'll just bring it down a few notches. Just for today. In age, in age. That's how I, that's what I refer to, you know, that, that's what I reference it as, a, a younger queen. Yes, yes. I accept, yes. trust me, I accept. I will ride that wave with you then. Yay, <laughs> and you're going to also give us a taste, right? Yes, right of here, course, not right here. Stage? Yes, this will be the first time I perform it live on TV, this song, Yay. y dicen que. Y dicen que. And they say, and they say salsa is dead, but salsa is alive and well, and it's all over the world. And we got to keep it going. Beautiful and reinvent it as yes. you are. All right, you guys, we got to take a quick break. But then when we return, Miss Yaya is going to perform her new single that you don't want to miss. Y dicen que. que. Don't go anywhere. Music is a bridge between the material and the spiritual. As a blind person, you have to be aware that nobody can tell you what you can or can't do. You really have to try things. My wife, who was also blind, was a good cook. When she died, that's when I started Meals on Wheels. My name is Harvey Lauer. America, let's do lunch. Drop off a hot meal and say hello. Volunteer by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. Hello, welcome back to Open, everyone. It's now time for this week's Open Artist Spotlight. <laughs> featuring Tito Puente Jr. Please welcome Grammy nominee, Miss Yaya. Who's ready to dance some salsa? Como vienes a decirme a mí que esto ya no se baila, el son ya 
no se osa y que guaguanco no está de moda. ¿Cómo te atreves a decirme a mí que no tengo derecho a cantarla? Pues si lo siento aquí en mi alma, cuando la escucho mi cuerpo baila que baila. Hay que darle espacio a la nueva generación. Ustedes dieron el ejemplo, esto sí que va creciendo. Quizás le tienes miedo a la nueva generación, eso yo no lo entiendo. Si hay espacio para todo el pueblo. Dice que la salsa se murió Eso Arranca Tito Puente Junior her single on June 14th at the Engine Room located at 707 8th Avenue and 42nd Street. And for more information, visit Miss Yaya and her music by going to MissYaya.com and check out her social media at, Miss Yaya, at the Miss Yaya. And also don't forget our National Puerto Rican Day Parade is taking place this Sunday, mm -hmm. June 9th, starting at 11 on 5th Avenue from East 43rd Street to East 79th Street. That is our show today, mi gente. Thanks to all our guests for coming through and to you, our viewers, for tuning in. If you missed any part of the show, you can check out the Recablecast tonight and 24 hours a day at Bronxnet.tv. I'm Rina Valentin, and from all of us here at Open, may the universe provide paz, prosperity, y amor. Adios. And I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Dicen que murió, que murió, dicen que la salsa se murió.